Hi, this is Christopher Perrin with a word about a well-ordered language. In order for us to interpret well, write well, speak well, read well, we need to develop the ability to use language in a ordered way, a well-ordered way. That's the title for our curriculum, A Well-Ordered Language. And as a part of ordering a language, we need to learn how to see its constituent parts or components, to see how language uh, exists as a variety of different kinds of words that can be woven together to form sentences and ideas. Well, in this case, I'm going to show you how we can do some analyzing of a sentence. So let's take a look at a sentence from Well-Ordered Language. This is from Book 3B that will help us to see the component parts of a sentence to analyze them and see how they work together. First, we will label them and then we will diagram them. So labeling them. First, we start by looking for phrases. Then we'll look for clauses, then principal elements, and then any modifiers. So scanning those four things, we see at first we do have a phrase, after studying, set apart by a comma there. After studying, Eliot felt wiser, tired, and very hungry. I'm very glad that Eliot is a student who is growing in wisdom and hunger. After studying, Eliot felt wiser, tired, and very hungry. No other phrases to note, no other clauses to note. So we'll look at the principal elements, and that will involve our subject and verb, and any objects to that verb. Well, we see that Eliot is our subject. He's the one doing the action or receiving action or connected to a linking verb, which is what we have with felt. The word felt is functioning kind of like the verb is, linking some attributes to Eliot, the subject. We will underline Eliot with one line and our verb we will underline with two. Now, the linking verb is going to link to some attributes, in this case, three predicate adjectives, which we will label with a PA, wiser, tired, and hungry. What, what do we learn about Eliot? We learn that he is wiser, tired, and hungry. He's, he, he, he felt wiser, tired, and hungry. These things characterize him. They're linked to him. Hence, felt is a linking verb. Well, as we continue to look, uh, at this sentence, we'll note that we have the word and, which we'll set apart with these angle, angle brackets. We also notice that we have um, some other verbal elements in this sentence. Studying is a verbal. So is tired a verbal because it involves a kind of action, in this case, growing weary. Why do we use the heart? Well, the heart is, uh, you know, the, the verb is the heart of a verbal. That's one way we memorize it. But notice that when you, when you draw a heart, you kind of use a V, reminding you of the fact that there's a verbal element to a word. In the case of studying, studying is a gerund. It's functioning as a verbal noun. Swimming is a great sport. In that sentence, swimming is a noun. Swimming. If I said, I'm gazing at that swimming duck, Swimming, in that case, is functioning as an adjective. It's a, it is a verbal, it is a, it's verbal, but it's a verbal adjective. So, studying is a gerund. Tired is functioning as a predicate adjective, making something known about Eliot, but it has a verbal component. Predicate adjectives are called predicate adjectives because from predicare, the Latin means to make known or to publish, we're making known something about Eliot that he's wiser, tired, or felt wiser, tired, and hungry. So there we have labeled our sentence uh, quite well. There's just a few things to add, and that's to look for modifiers. Well, we do see a modifier right here in the word very. Eliot is hungry, but he's very hungry. And this is an adverb. And this verb very is modifying how he feels. He feels hungry, very hungry but it's also connected with hungry. How hungry? Very hungry. Well, this phrase, after studying, actually together, these two words as a phrase, is functioning as an adverb, modifying the verb felt. So from this clause, we'll draw a line here to felt, and we'll note that this is an adverb as well, an adverbial clause. 
right? Mm -hmm. An adverbial phrase, rather. After studying, Eliot felt wiser. But because it involves a preposition, after is a preposition, studying in this phrase is the object of a preposition, it also is a prepositional phrase. So we'll put a little PRP there to remind us that not only is it an adverbial phrase, but it contains preposition, so it's a prepositional phrase. Well, that's how we would analyze or label a sentence using the techniques in the well-ordered language curriculum. I hope that's been helpful. But now let's take a look at how we would diagram this sentence. So we label and diagram in well-ordered language. Here's what that would look like. First, we'll draw a horizontal line, straight as I can draw it, across, across the page. And then we'll start with the subject. We always start with the subject. The subject, in this case, we know because we've already lab labeled the sentence, is Eliot. I'll draw a bisecting line to separate the subject from the predicate. And our predicate, of course, involves the verb felt. So I'll draw, I'll, I'll record the word felt there. And then we know that he felt wiser, tired, and very hungry using, you know, you know, with, with predicate adjectives. To indicate that we have predicate adjectives following the verb, we'll draw an angular line, uh, not bisecting, but touching, touching the horizontal line. This tells us that we have some predicate adjectives coming. And in this case, we have a set of them, compound predicate adjectives. So I'm going to draw an angular line to the top and to the bottom so that we can record more than just one predicate adjective. And I'll draw this little dotted line from top to bottom indicating the conjunction and. So Eliot felt, and we know one predicate adjective is wiser. We'll list them in order. Another is tired. And another is hungry. All of these are predicate adjectives. Tired, however, is a verbal, so we will put it on this little lawn chair to indicate that it's a verbal. We don't have to do anything else with wiser and hungry. Eliot felt wiser, tired, and hungry. But we know that we have a modifier, the adverb here, very, so let's include that with an angular line coming down from the bottom. Very hungry. Well, what else do we need to add? Well, we need to do something with this, uh, this uh, adverbial phrase after studying, or this prepositional phrase, is both prepositional and adverbial phrase, after studying. And because it's modifying felt, we'll have a line coming from felt. He felt after, after doing what? After studying, and because this also was a verbal, we'll put it on its little lawn chair. Studying. Well, there you have it. You can see that this sentence has been well labeled and well diagrammed. It's a great technique to acquire, enabling students to see how language is structured, how to order it well, so that they themselves might be able to read well, write well, and speak well. Thanks for watching.